Let's do some classic word problems that can be solved using rational equations. The formula relating distance, rate, and time is d equals rt. It can be used to solve rational equations. However, this same formula can also be represented by r equals distance divided by time and time equals distance divided by r. So rowing. Sandra's canoe rate is in still water is 6 miles per hour. It takes Sandra three hours to travel 10 miles round trip. Assuming a constant rate of speed, determine the rate of the current. So one of the things that we know on this is that the rate of the, her rowing is at six miles per hour. She's going to travel for three hours to travel a 10 mile round trip. So we're going to assume that she has a constant rate of speed. We've got to figure out the rate of the current. So the rate of the current is the unknown. So I'm going to set R equal to the rate of the current. And then I'm going to set up a equation since uh, we're trying to solve for the rate of the current. Uh, one of the things I can do is use this formula because we do know the time. We know the time for the whole trip is three hours. And it is a 10-mile round trip, which means it's five miles going uh, upstream and five miles going downstream. So the time of three hours is going to equal the distance divided by the rate, uh, let's say, going uh, upstream. So if she's going upstream, her distance is the five miles, because that's half of the 10-mile trip, over the rate. Well, if she's traveling upstream, her speed is going to be the six miles per hour she can travel in still water, minus the rate of the current, because the current is going to push her backwards. It's going to make her row slower. Then we're also going to add to that the distance and the rate going downstream. So it's still five miles going downstream, but this time the current is going to push her forward faster, so we're going to have six plus r, and this is how you set up the equation. So we solve this equation by doing what you've done already on uh, the first part of this video. We're going to find a common denominator, and the common denominator is going to be 6 plus r and 6 minus r. So we multiply both sides times 6 minus r, 6 plus r. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the right side of the equation to start here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's going to be uh, traditionally what we've done here already. We know the 6 minus r's will cancel each other out. So that will give me 5 times 6 plus r. Uh, so again, the 6 minus r's cancel each other out. So we have 5 times 6 plus r. And then again, remember that it's not canceled out for the whole problem there. So let me replace that again. So that was, whoops, let's try that again. So again, that was 6 minus r, okay? And then we can cancel out the 6 plus r with this 6 plus r, so that leaves us with 5 times 6 minus r. So on the left side of the equation, we're going to take, uh, doesn't matter how you multiply these together, but you are going to have to do some double distributing. So just kind of off to the side here, do you know what 6 minus r times 6 plus r is? I'm going to multiply those first. So 6 times 6 is 36 plus 6r from my outsides minus 6r minus r squared. And the 6r is canceled, so it's 36 minus r squared. So 6 minus r times 6 plus r is going to equal 36 minus r squared. And then I'm going to distribute that 3 in there with that. So 3 times 36 minus r squared. And now I'm going to distribute. So 3 times 36 and 3 times negative r squared. So that's 108 minus 3r squared equals 30 plus 5r, and then distribute again over here, plus 30 minus 5r. 
And notice that the five R's are gonna cancel each other as we put together our like terms. So I have 108 minus three R squared equals 60. 30 plus 30 is 60. And let's subtract 108 from both sides. So that gives me negative three R squared equals negative 48. Divide by negative three. So r squared equals 16, and we will do a square root of both sides. And that being the case, I get r equals, we just square rooted, so it should be plus or minus four, but since we're trying to find the rate of the current, and the rate of the current should not be negative, uh, the rate of the current will be just the positive answer, which is four or four miles per hour. And we can replace R with 4 in the uh, set problem that we set up, and it will not give us a denominator of 0, so that is the correct answer, 4 miles per hour. Here's another classic word problem, uh, doing the classic work problems, where you know how long it takes uh, two groups to work separately, but we might want to figure out how long it takes them to work together or we know how long it'll take them to work together, and we want to figure out how long it would take them to do a job separately. So this one says, every year the junior and senior classes at Hillcrest High School build a house for the community. If it takes the senior class 24 days to complete a house and 18 days if they work with the junior class, how long would it take the junior class to complete the house if they worked alone? Mm -hmm. so think about this in terms of how long will it take the classes to do the, uh, how much of the job will it take the classes to do in one day or whatever one time period we're dealing with. Since we're building a house in a matter of days, how long will it take them to do, do the job in one, in one day? Or how much of the job can they do in one day? So the way we do these problems is try to figure out how much of the job can they do in one day. So we have two classes worked together. We have the senior class. We have the junior class. And then we have them working together. So how long, much of the job can they do in one day? So how much can they do in one day? Is the question you're asking. Well, since the senior class can do the whole job in eight or in 24 days, they can do 1 24th of the job in one day. And adding to that the junior class, how much can the junior class do in one day? Well, that's actually the question. The question is, is how long will it take the junior class to complete the house if they work alone? So that's gonna be our variable. So the junior class will be able to do in one day, one X of the job. And we'll set that equal to how much of the class, they, how much of the job they can do in one day working together. And since together they can do the job in 18 days, together they can do the one eighteenth of the job together. And that's how you would set up your equation. So we need a common denominator to clear the equation of fractions on this one. And uh, it's going to have an x in the common denominator. And 72 is a number that 24 and 18 both go into. So let's use 72x as my common denominator. So 72x times 1 24th. And 24 goes into 72 three times. So that would be 3x times 1, which is just 3x, plus, and then we've got 72x is going to be taken times 1 over x. The x's would cancel on that one, so that would be plus 72 equals, and on the right side of the equation, 18 goes into 72 four times, so that becomes 1 times 4 times x, which is just 4x. And then to solve it, we need to get the x's on the same side. So we subtract 3x from both sides. And we've actually already solved it. So 72 equals x, and that's the answer. It takes those lazy juniors a whole 72 days to do the job by themselves. So thankful for the seniors uh, that they're coming along and helping them out and speeding up the process. Let's practice another building question. It's very similar, but it does have one change to it. So this time we got Noah and Owen are building birdhouses together. 
if Noah can build a particular house in six days and Owen can build the same house in five days, how long will it take the two of them to work together? So we know how long it'll take them to do the job separately, but this time we're asking how long will it take them to work together? So again, how much of the job can Noah do in one day? And in one day, he can do one-sixth of the job because it takes him six days to do the whole job. He can do one-sixth of the job in one day. We'll add to that how much Owen can do, how much of the job Owen can do in one day. And that's one-fifth because he can do the job in five days. So uh, one-fifth of the job can be done in one day. And that will be equal to how long they can do the job together which is what we're trying to figure out. So it'll be one X of the day. So there's our setup of our equation. We will need a common denominator to clear the equation of fractions. So we will use 30 X on both sides. So 30 X. 30 X times one sixth. So six goes into 35 times, which would cancel out the six there. And so that would be five x, and we do it again, again, the common denominator is 30x, because we're going to take that 30x now times 1 fifth, and 5 goes into 36 times, so that would be 6x times 1, or 6x, equals, and then the x's cancel, equals 30, or 11x equals 30, divide by 11, so you get x equal to 30 over 11, and as a fraction or a mixed number, that would be 2 and 8 elevenths days. So working together, they can do the job in 2 and 8 elevenths days. So one of the questions they put in this section is the mixture problem. And I'm not sure exactly why it's in this section because I would say it's uh, something I would not do using rational expressions. But just to review how you can do these problems, a mixture problem is when you're taking two things and grouping them together and trying to figure out how much of one uh, set of items or one solution needs to be mixed with another solution to attain something that costs a certain amount or has a certain percentage of acid in it, just like this chemistry problem. This problem says, how much of a 70% acid solution should Mia acts, mix with two or 12 milliliters of a solution that contains 15% acid to contain a 60% acid solution? So we're trying to figure out how much of a 70% solution should be added. So that's the variable. The 70% acid solution, we're going to write 70% as a decimal, so that would be 0.7, and take it times the total amount of the solution. The amount of acid that's in the solution is only going to be 0.7 times the total amount of the solution. We're going to add to that the 15% solution, and that's 0.15 as the decimal, but we already know that there are, there's 12 milliliters of that solution. So we will take that times 12. And that's going to equal a 60% solution. But when we mix together the unknown amount with the 12 milliliters, the total amount of the 60% solution is going to be the unknown amount plus 12 for the 12 milliliters. And I'll group that in parentheses because that represents one number. And that's the setup. So you notice I really don't need to set this one up using a, um, a um, rational expression or a rational equation. So I just need to do a common or do a, a distributive property on the right side. So I'll have 0.7x plus 15, 0.15 times 12 is 1.8 equals 0.6x plus 7.2. I'll subtract the 0.6x from both sides. So that's negative 0.1x plus 1.8 equals 7.2. Subtract 1.8 from both sides. So negative 0.1x equals 5.4. Divide by, uh, excuse me, that's not negative. I need to back up. So you're not confused, 0.7x minus 0.6x is not negative. So let me erase that there and there. 
Now divide by 0.1, and we get x equal to 54, so we're adding 54 milliliters of the 70% solution.